Uh, good morning, right. everyone, or I should say good afternoon. I am Laura, Media and Communication Manager at Care Community. Welcome to today's uh, live panel, physical panel, and this webinar live session on a topic of retail messaging. We would like to thank Alaris Lab for sponsoring the session and Andre for sharing his presentation with us today. Uh -huh. We would also like to thank Andreas Constantinides for moderating the session and all panelists for joining. So, no, let's not wait any longer, and I will hand over to Andre to share his presentation. Over to you, Andre. Okay, thank you very much. So, give me a second. Okay. Thank you already. Yep, thank you already. Very, very fast. Uh, yeah, now rolling back the time towards the beginning oh, yeah. of the world. Okay, so is it okay with the screen sharing? I mean, can yes. everyone see? All good. Okay, All very, good. Good. very good. So no indecent pictures, hopefully. Uh, I did my best to conceal them. So yeah, good afternoon to everyone once again. Hopefully there is someone also joining us online. Honestly, it's a pain for me to be joining online as well because I, I was planning to come to Berlin physically, but due to the travel restrictions, yeah, I couldn't make it. So, well, at least I don't have to wear a mask. So, basically. Well, let really... me tell you a secret. Um, we don't wear a mask anyway. Although that we don't see prepare some marvelous masks, but nobody okay. wearing, so you don't have to worry. But hey, come on, people uh -huh. always wear a mask. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so um, before we get down to the presentation about the retail messaging, for those who don't know where we come from, just a couple of words about Alaris. Alaris Labs is a vendor, a developer of software products for the telecom industry, different areas like voice interconnect, SMS hubbing, enterprise messaging. Yeah, we have products for all that. And we are, we are happy to have customers in more than 40 countries globally. So that does bring a little bit of experience and knowledge that I'll be more than happy to share with you today. So yeah, retail messaging. Um, it all begins with the very first question that we are often asked by our new potential customers, especially the ones coming from the voice over IP industry. Is SMS still something worth looking at or does it make more sense to concentrate on more advanced technologies at the very beginning? Yeah, basically, I can understand these people why they ask that question, because we all remember the voice over IP time. Now, 15 to 20 years ago, it was booming. Now, it no longer is. So, and these people are naturally cautious not to step into the same kind of problem twice. So, yeah, the answer to that question is easy. We, we can just look at the statistics that everybody knows, I believe. So, this year, the overall number of messages is going to exceed 2 trillion, which is a lot to me. And judging by the reports from analysts, uh, no decline is expected at least in the next five years. So we're all good here. SMS as a technology is commercially viable, it's gonna stay. Uh, there are two main reasons for that to me. First is that it's really a ubiquitous channel to reach any mobile subscriber in the world, even someone living in a faraway village and only having a Nokia 3310 with a green screen and no internet, so no nonsense. So it's, it's still going to work. And the other advantage is very appealing to me personally. So this morning, while I was getting ready for this presentation, I made an effort and uh, checked how many messaging applications beside SMS and email I have in my phone. It turned out to be 11. And honestly, yeah, I often happen to be stacking and read messages in all these applications. I may have dozens and I'm so ashamed, even hundreds of messages, unread messages in my Skype or Viber or whatever, but not in my SMS inbox. Yeah, so SMS comes first, people read messages, probably it comes from the old times when there were no messengers and we were not using smartphones and the number of SMS that we were receiving was much less and we got trained to read everything arriving in our mailbox and we still do. So 98% of text messages received as SMS get read by the, received, by the recipients, so, which is great. So yeah, SMS is definitely out there. It's still working, it's still good as we all know, but now let's look into different use cases, different use cases related to the messaging industry. 
to understand which of the technologies suits better in each particular case. So my personal favorite, transactional traffic, you know, something I really like dealing with as a customer. Each time I receive a salary from a company, I receive an SMS from my bank, which is nice. Yeah, two-factor authentication, verification codes, everything comes in as an SMS. And if we look at the technical side, at the requirements for this type of traffic, we will not see really any need for change. Um, the text format is still quite good for one-time passwords. So no need for fancy things like rich cards, etc. Yeah, the coverage is still perfect, as perfect as it can be. And yeah, basically the only factor that can disrupt the success of SMS in the transactional area is the pricing. Yeah, because the general trend these days with mobile operators globally is to secure their profits as high as possible. And they install SMS firewalls, they make agreements with SMS aggregators to protect their networks against gray routes, illegal SS7 termination, thin boxes, all that to control the incoming traffic streams and manage the prices better. And sometimes they manage the prices so efficiently that it becomes too heavy on the enterprise customer side and the brands start looking for other options and obviously find them easily. Yeah, so primarily as push notifications, but that basically requires an application to be installed on the subscriber side. And then OTTs come as obvious options, Viber, WhatsApp, et cetera. And sometimes in case of really large retail customers, yeah, we see that they go as far as setting up their own MV nodes to more efficiently handle their traffic. Here in Russia, for example, I know at least two large use cases like that. So two banks, settled and the knows over the last couple of years to enter the operator game. All that means that they have to manage volumes between one and three billion messages per month, which is connected to the like, substantial costs. So yeah, to cut it short, transactional traffic, technically SMS is quite good. The only thing to think about is the pricing. But if you look into anything related to sales and marketing, yeah, we see that other alternative options are much better equipped for the retail industry than SMS. Both on the content side, so text and web links are no longer good for people when they can use different multimedia, carousels and stuff like that. Yeah, and what's more, probably even more important than that, is that the ultimate purpose of any communication between a brand and a subscriber is to engage that subscriber into conversation, to get some kind of feedback, to receive like opinions, mm -hmm. to conclude a deal, make a sale, etc. So it has to be a full blown two way communication. And here, of course, things like WhatsApp or even more about RCS you know, are much better equipped. But there are always restrictions. And of course, here we have restrictions as well. First comes the coverage. Uh, even WhatsApp, which is ahead of the rest of, uh, of the gang, only has about, well, only has about 2 billion subscribers. And didn't, didn't mean to express any disrespect. Yeah, 2 billion is a lot, but it's two and a half times less than the overall number of mobile users in the world. So, yeah, others are behind. And besides, it's also about the geography of your customer base. Yeah, for example, here in CIS, it's more about fiber. It's the most popular messaging application. You know, while in Europe and Latin America, it's definitely about WhatsApp. Yeah, a separate note about RCS, which everybody has been speaking about over the last three to five years. You know, obviously, one day it will become a big thing. But right now, you know, we see that the market share, the number of subscribers, RCS subscribers globally is just around you know, half a billion, which is more than 10 times less than the world's population. So it's a little bit early to speak about the global market penetration of this technology. And besides, there is one more restriction. They'll have to think about something for me personally, because I'm an iPhone user. So they'll have to somehow lure Apple to join the game. I know there are some discussions going on, but I haven't heard about any final conclusion, any final success, because Apple has their own business messaging. They seem to be happy about that. And yeah, on the whole, RCS has certain problems in rolling out, like they are related to 
the Google policies in some countries or the policies of some countries towards Google and overall complexity of rolling out the RCS infrastructure for a mobile operator, all that IMS related stuff, you know, network planning, money, resources. So it's going to be a long story. And my personal opinion is that RCS is not going to be here in full until at least two or three years from now. So yeah, and even if we leave all these technical restrictions aside, uh, there are some commercial things to mention. For example, if you are an aggregator willing to start working with an OTT provider, you may find yourself in a situation where you need to make a substantial deposit, you know, just like an entry bar. Um, yeah, basically the billing approach, especially for WhatsApp, you know, the billing approach is different from what we are used to in the conventional messaging industry. So session, session, session based things. Yeah. So, and different partners of WhatsApp are trying to make it easier and user friendly for regular customers, for brands and sub aggregators. Yeah. But sometimes it leads to additional controversy on the billing side. Like if you receive proposals for WhatsApp from two aggregators, you may end up not being able to effectively compare them because the billing approaches in each of them are different. So, of course, this is not something you cannot live with. Of course, you can. But all these things need to be kept in mind when, like, thinking about entering this business or making it more efficient. Well, I'm a solution provider guy, so I'm naturally biased. I look at the picture from the standpoint of what kind of features your platform needs to have to make it all work. So, yeah, finally, the answer about which of the technologies is better for retail messaging is very simple. Yeah, use everything. Yeah, so your retail platform needs to be fully equipped with a variety of different APIs to all possible OTTs that make sense commercial-wise. Uh, and of course, keeping SMS as one of the channels with the possibility to set up failover delivery scenarios, falling back to SMS when it's not possible to use an OTT channel. Um, of course, you need to also keep in mind the APIs for the incoming traffic streams to be able to seamlessly integrate with third-party systems like CRM and the like so that the conversations between the brand and the customers may be initiated outside your platform. And yeah, chatbot scenarios, flexible scenarios for conversation are getting more and more of a must. And artificial intelligence is going to become indispensable you know, to bring in more flexibility. So all that you need to have on your enterprise messaging platform. And last but not least, large customers. So everybody, is always looking for large retail customers because they obviously bring you large volumes, large profits, but they may also bring you large problems. Yeah, because, well, probably everybody's aware with the recent Uber case, when Uber was looking for aggregators able to process vast amounts of traffic to different countries. And a customer like this may bring you something like 30, 50, or even more thousand messages per second, which is a lot. And your system must be able to process that without delays because delays are measured. And like these large, large, large customers put forward very strict SLAs related to the quality. They measure delivery delays, they measure mess message acknowledgement delays, and they put, put up high, huge fines for that. So your system needs to be really well trained to cope with, you know, large volumes of peak traffic. Otherwise, a big customer may turn into a big loss. So, yeah, that's about it. That's about it I wanted to tell you about. Um, Thank you, Andre. You gave us a lot of uh, food for thought. Absolutely. Because you, you succeed to put all the questions in your presentation. And it's, it's obvious that, that you know the industry and you know what are the challenges at this specific moment. So we're going to get into the panel and we're going to talk, uh, talk about it. And uh, because there's a lot of uh, questions that we have to address concerning the, the retail, the enterprise messaging, which is, uh, I'm, I'm really very happy that uh, uh, recently I realized that the wholesalers, the aggregators, that they just connect the pipes all these years and just make some traffic, they finally realized that the enterprise, it's a really demanding and hard work. 
So I would like to, to welcome the, the panelists. I would like to welcome Fabrizio Salanitri, which is uh, the CEO of Horizon, and he is next to me physically. I would like to, uh, to welcome Etienne from Viber and uh, Dario from uh, Mobile Ecosystem Forum. And we are here in order to talk about all of this stuff. Also, I would like to thank Andre for uh, sponsoring this session. Uh, as a Laris, uh, we really appreciate this. A pleasure. So, um, a pleasure. A pleasure for us too. So I suppose that uh, just because I'm an enterprise guy, I would like to start, if, if you allow me, from uh, Etienne from Viber, because, you know, uh, yeah. In fact, it's the first OTT that started with the enterprise messaging about three years ago. We make such an effort back then, all of the the companies that we're dealing with the retailers in order to, to give them the rules and to train the people how they're going to send rich message and not 160 characters and pictures and all of these things that the Viber back then used to change every 45 days. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, Etienne, do you want to start with, with the enterprise in general? Yeah. And maybe you can talk about the topics of Andre or you choose. Yeah, for sure. I mean, as you say, Viber has been uh, the pioneer in the OTT, uh, OTT world uh, that has uh, launched uh, a business messaging solutions uh, that, is, uh, that was enable uh, brands to uh, send message uh, to our users. Uh, part of our strategy uh, has been to work closely with uh, SMS aggregators uh, to connect uh, to, our, to, 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 to the brands. Uh, usually we are not working directly with brands. Uh, we, are, we, tr we prefer to uh, um, uh, go through SMS aggregators uh, to work with the brands uh, and uh, uh, take advantage of, uh, uh, of their systems to uh, address uh, the message. Uh, during three years, uh, it has been a, a long, a long pass with uh, more and more features that came that came in. Uh, we start with only text. Uh, we add pictures. We add uh, URLs to enrich the type of message uh, brands can send, and uh, new formats are uh, are coming in. And in parallel of that, uh, we also have seen the, the development of chatbot, like Andre uh, mentions, and. Uh, Part of our uh, strategy is now to uh, uh, to merge uh, the business messaging and uh, and uh, and our chatbot approach to uh, to offer a kind of uh, uh, overall strategy and overall solutions to uh, to brands. And uh, one um, one of the biggest challenge also in the in the near future that we have seen previously uh, coming in and particularly after the, the COVID situation is brands started to send push notifications, informative message, and now they're also more looking for conversational uh, channels and uh, OTT like Vibers uh, are really, I think, uh, is, is a perfect place to manage such communications and such uh, messaging experience between the brands and the consumers because it's exactly what they are looking for. Uh, and as a user, it's real time, it's super easy, you have your phone in your pocket, you reply. Uh, it's, less, uh, it's less formal than a, a, a concrete email uh, and it's faster and it's create a, a deeper relationship between the brands and, and the consumer. Good. Uh, Dario, let me ask you something. Uh, what is the opinion of the mobile ecosystem forum about the enterprise messaging? I mean, there is a lot of things happen and, uh, you know, it's the RCS and uh, if you see uh, in, in the side of uh, uh, mobile ecosystem, we are talking about a lot about RCS and all the stuff. So what is, what, what is your conclusion about all of this and what do you think that is finally needed in the enterprise uh, messaging? Uh, Andreas, so lots of interesting questions you give me. I don't know if I can answer them exactly in so, such a short time, but let me try. <clears throat> First, let's start with RCS. Uh, MATH, which is a, a global uh, trade association, is not for profit. We look at all different uh, players, uh, all different channels. Mm -hmm. uh, RCS is supposed to give 
that kind of development to seem to be a bit more similar, uh, to make us SMS a bit more similar to the OTT players out there. But uh, as Andre was saying, uh, it will take quite a few years before you actually get the maturity of in uh, reach into the market itself. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice addition, but right now it's not going to make a big dent uh, straight away to your campaigns. Uh, but back to what Etienne was saying, Andre was saying that the world is complicated, um, but the complication is good for consumers. It's, it's, it's a nice experience which is emerging. It's a rich experience which goes to VOTT and to other platforms as well, Pinterest, uh, you know, Snapchat, whatever you have, everything is turned into a communication channel. And the, the real question is, can we stitch together a conversations out of all of these, including email, voice, et cetera. So the excitement in terms of uh, the community is very high because there's so much to do um, and so much is happening in terms of good news for the um, for market as well. This morning, I probably gave some of the numbers with Eric. I will not uh, repeat myself, um, um, but you can find some of those yeah, at math. So overall, I think the community is very interested. Even after COVID time, things are going pretty well. One area, and that's I probably I should stop and say, which has been particularly affected, recently and still not at its best is retail. And the retail area is what to do. It's, a, it's not just the messaging part, it's the entire customer experience that is changing and it's transforming. There's a big transformation happening there. And I think, so back to math, there's a lot of interesting things happening in the ecosystem. And then if you look at the segments, probably the enterprise segments of the retail market, a lot of new challenges on which A2P and specifically P2A more than A2P could really be a big answer to this transformation or could really a big part of the transformation itself. I see, I see. Fabrizio, do you think that it's a lot of work for the brands, all of these changes and all of these channels? Um, that's also a good question. Yeah, and well. Can anyone? Um, I think they are in front of a mountain, you know, which mm -hmm. they have to climb up because uh, even we in our industry are providing even technology. Uh, sometimes we are overwhelmed of all the possibilities. And uh, I doubt that everyone in this room really understands every channel 100%. And uh, now imagine um, to somebody which is uh, not in this industry because his job is to sell cars, to sell shoes, to sell. Yeah trousers, whatever, for them, you know, to, to, to realize the possibilities. And at the end, the marketeers are the creative people because what do we provide? We provide a communication channel. Mm -hmm. We are a logistic company at the end, you know, we bring one message to the other. Yeah, yeah. What is in the container, it's out of the creativity of uh, the marketeers. And, um, and I think when they will understand what is all possible, the creativity can explode, you know, but uh, it takes time that it makes click mm -hmm. uh, to see all the opportunities they will have with this technology. And uh, there is really, really a lot to do. And I think also that the market knows nothing, almost nothing about it, uh, what uh, we can do. I mean, there are some early adopters, but that's uh, the early adopters only. This is not the max. Mm -hmm which is a good opportunity for us. No? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's what Andre said in his presentation that you need to have them all. It's, it, the point is that uh, technology goes that far, and especially with the messaging, and as you mentioned uh, previously, that there's the new generation that are coming with other channels. So by the time that the, the, our industry is going to digest the whole thing, they're going to be in front of, of that, just of, of preparing the new ones, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I think it's, it's a bit complicated about the, the enterprise. Uh, uh, however, the, the, the good news is that everything's starting now. So I think there is, there is time for companies you know, to, to do things and to, and uh, also it's very important for the, let's say the, the medium itself to make much, uh, much less complicated procedures. For example, Viber, I can, you, can, you can prove me wrong or right. Uh, they tried after two years you know, to make the, 
the procedure much more easier for the, for the marketeer. But I don't know what's happened and all of the rest, they still have a lot of problems, I think. So, uh, Andre, how you address all of this? Well, basically, uh, Fabrizio was right to say that we are more, more of a logistics company. Yeah, mm -hmm. Our business is to get the messages delivered, to provide the necessary transport for that. And I would say we successfully cope with that. So in case of Alaris, for example, we have equipped the system with like all kinds of APIs and the billing logic that will work well for session-based billing, who starts first, you know, P2A, A2B, all that kind of thing. Yeah, so probably at this time, this is the most we can do to make the lives of our customers easy. Um, well, easier, I would say, because they're by no means easy. Yeah, and interesting enough, yeah, we made a very interesting observation while working with customers of different types. It makes a lot of sense watching smaller aggregators, you know, play this game because they are generally faster and, you know, their imagination works just well and they don't have all the burden of, you know, the, the internal bureaucracy, you know, looking for funding for different internal approvals and stuff like that when trying something new. So sometimes these guys really give you a lot of food for thought as to what can be done in your system. When you look, they, they are not scared of anything. They try new things, they break the rules, they go ahead of the time of the market. So sometimes it's very interesting. Sometimes they even break the law, but we're not going to discuss that. Yeah, but it's very interesting, generally speaking, looking at them and looking at the directions they take in their business development. Sometimes it's very handy for everyone. Same. Etienne, what do you think that's the first thing that the telcos can do in order to address all of these challenges for the brands? I mean, as Fabrice, as Fabrizio say, I mean, there is a, a strong need of uh, educations and evangelizations. Uh, I mean, at Vibers, uh, brands started to send only uh, uh, promotional and transactional message in a one-way conversations. Uh, it was avoiding them to get uh, feedback from users, so it was more informative, informative uh, uh, channels. Um, and I think it's a uh, as, as an OTT uh, provider on our side, uh, we, we are trying to, to, to build long-term long -term, long -term partnership with our uh, partners, so with, uh, with our aggregators, uh, uh, to, manage, like, to manage a kind of bespoke collaborations where in one end, they can take advantage of all uh, our technology and all the improvements that we are doing on uh, uh, our uh, business uh, communication solutions. On the other end, uh, we also need to get a transparent feedback from the aggregators to understand what the brands are looking for, uh, what type of improvements uh, are they looking for when they are sending messages on our site, how they want their message to appear, uh, what type of uh, prevented, prevention they would like to get, uh, and, to, and on our side to combine it uh, with our uh, user uh, perceptions and what they are looking for. Uh, we are not here to destroy our user base. It's uh, definitely the, the, the thing that we, we, we don't want to hurt. So we'll have to, uh, to, to adapt uh, what the prompts want and also what the users are looking for when they are uh, on Vibers. So we have to combine all uh, this, uh, these, two, uh, these two views in a, in, a, in, a, in a single product that is meaningful and understandable because things can get very complex very easily. So the, the, the idea is like to try to, to, to build uh, um, uh, an offer that is comprehensive enough for brands when they start uh, digging uh, uh, a new, uh, digging and opening a new, a new channel like, uh, like, like us. Etienne, we are talking about very, uh, some procedures that are really very demanding and complicated. Uh, who do you think that he has to train the, the, the market? Because we're talking about training here. We are not talking about sending an SMS boom and this is it. We are talking about huge regulations that uh, Viber started first to, to have and they did, they did right, right. And now it's getting more complicated with RCS, with WhatsApp and all of this stuff. So we're, we are talking about a, a, a real training of the global industry. Who's gonna do that? Can you, can you address this? 
I would say, I would say that aggregators and got 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 a strong uh, strong strong positions to address it because they are the ones that at the end of the day that are uh, connecting uh, the dots between the brands and the different channels available uh, between email, SMS, OTTs, RCS, and at the end of the day, the brands. Uh, uh, will go through what the user wants. So basically, the users prefer to receive uh, by emails. He will receive by emails. He prefer to, to receive on Vibers. He will receive on Vibers, and etc. And obviously, after all, there can be rules depending on uh, if uh, first provider is, is not capable to, to send the message for its reasons. They are falling back to SMS. So it's a, it's option that we have uh, developed uh, with our uh, with our partners. Um, so at the end of the day, the user is deciding on which channels he, he prefers to, uh, to, 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 uh, to communicate. And after all, uh, brands and uh, aggregators need to adapt to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, Dario, what about, I haven't got any idea about conventional rates. For example, uh, we're talking about ACA that started slowly, slowly, you know. We're talking about some WhatsApp. Uh, have you got any information about the conventional rate, uh, the real difference between the SMS, or uh, have you got something like this to tell us? Um, we're starting to collect, uh, and thanks, we are going to publish them in, I think it's end of September. The first thing in terms of rate, not the conversion rate we have yet, um, uh, and because a big uh, caveats we need to do, and you can tell them more or more on that, I'm sure, but the, we need to look at ATP versus P2A. Some of the platforms are specifically, let's say WhatsApp, focusing on the P2A side, so there is a, the conversion rate there is a, is a different discussion. Um, we are monitoring uh, through our surveys, two of them being published, you'll find some of the uh, free to for everybody to download some of the reports on our website or mobileecosystemforum.com. Um, at a high level, uh, we will publish the specific of platforms, uh, Viber, WhatsApp, uh, email, etc. Um, and we do that in terms of numbers. And surprisingly, what we're trying to do is there are 4 billion adults in uh, the world, but if you count all the OTT, there are about 7 to 8 billion users. So I think we have to meet, make a meaningful view of the overlaps. And where they are, um, and so and that's one of the first view. But it is back to the complexity, and we will we we are happy to provide these as an industry view and an industry highlight. But it's back to the complexity of if you are a retailer, if you're a brand, which of my customers I want to reach for what reason when, and so it's a much more complications than just how big am I. So back to the discussions on RCS, which is still very small. But as a complement to SMS, which is so general available everywhere, it works very well. But if your customers is really engaged in a Viber discussion, in a Snapchat discussion, in WhatsApp, then maybe you need to be able to intervene there. Or um, what about voice? You know, should, should you play that? And should it be integrated into a voice? Uh, so back to the complexity discussions and how Fabrizio was saying, how you have to put it all together. That's really important. Um, but, you know, back to your questions, we do have some of these data wait for us a bit longer until we publish them as we are cleaning up all of them. Um, but at the same time, so I'm not trying to undersell our work, uh, the quality and the expertise that it takes is more than just looking at one specific KPI nowadays, is looking at customer flows, is looking at specific um, customized brands view of what you need when um, and so the the word is getting more complicated for us uh, not just for, for people outside there and but we need to give a quick answer and sometimes these kpis are a good way to summarize things and, and show the real value of what we bring and that comes with good news the overall messaging kpis are much stronger than the uh, email kpis right now or Unfortunately, I have to say with all of the fraud we've seen, the voice KPIs, telemarketing has created a bad name for using phones unless it's a P2A um, application. So uh, here we go. I hope I've, I've, I've given you something. Okay, we are looking Maybe forward. Not the we are looking forward to, okay, I, well, I understand that we can release your paper just like this in an open conversation, but we are really looking forward to seeing it and, and to read it. 
because uh, many things happened with the OTTs. I remember when uh, Viber started, we, uh, there was a lot of people believed that when you have the first commercial message in Viber, you are going to erase the application. And it didn't work like this. The people loved it, you know? And that bring, brings us to the revolution of P2A. This is what I believe, because now the consumer, with the increase of the of the e-commerce and the e-commerce and all of the stuff, you know, uh, it's it's the customer that starts the conversation. It's not only the bulk campaign that you're going to send, but also the customer is going in WhatsApp or in Viber or in Messenger. Now, do you have these shoes in 45? You know, and then it starts the whole conversation. So, Fabrizio, what do you have, you have to tell us about uh, P2A and how your platform is prepared for this? Um, so, where, where, start? where we start? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. where, where, where shall we start? Maybe um, I would like to give the audience first a bird. Okay? okay. Because before we get into the techni uh, technical things and, and, and different channels. So I think what the enterprise messaging needs is a democratic way of platforms. I think that's the base. I mean, who, I mean, who is buying retail uh, tools from us, are the marketeers? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's the target. Yeah. Group. And, and thanks God, first time we put them on the scope. Yeah. Because all of these years we used to say that the marketeer, the brand is paying everybody, but nobody's taking care of the brand. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So this means that uh, I think it's very, very important uh, to also understand uh, the job of a marketing guy. The job of a marketing guy is not to select a thousand platforms and to uh, get mad with uh, millions and zillions of different pricing scheme, you know? So his job is to push his brand. So to add conversion, uh, to have a return on investment of his marketing money. And uh, I think what we are facing now is uh, uh, a pretty much heterogene um, and, and, and environment of messaging platforms where everyone is doing a little bit his own rules. And you're in a jungle at the end, you know, of rules. I mean, with WhatsApp, you have to apply this template. There you have to register a sender ID. There you have the permission, I don't know, from the Pope if you are allowed to the yeah, order yeah, yeah. side. I'm exaggerating, yeah. but you see, there is a lot of headache which a marketeer doesn't want to hear. Yeah. Okay, because that's not his thing. And, and he doesn't have the time to do that. Exactly, and uh, maybe if I can come back to Etienne, uh, what, who said, who is in charge? It was a, a valuable question. Who is in charge to go to the mission to explain to everyone mm -hmm. and that this should be the aggregator? Might be, but I think access to the brand have the agencies. And now let's say you have an elevator pitch. You are one hour at Coca-Cola marketing headquarters. So you decide now, you talk 55 minutes about different platform billing systems, you know, or you try to sell really a marketing campaign to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's why I think it's very important first to decide which P2A, you know, yeah, yeah, to yeah. also which market you address and also, um, to understand where your audience is because might be you know that uh, my mother is maybe on whatsapp you know uh your brother is uh, maybe on uh, on instagram Who, whoever you know we don't know that you know so it's not that you just can say i make one campaign for all you know so uh and this will be even worse in the future so back to the question how our platform is ready we try at least to see how marketeers see the whole thing, you know? So we come back not from the technology point of view, but from, we, we, we are results driven. So first of all is the campaign and the campaign should have a target. So who is your audience? And then we will try to find uh, um, uh, the right channel. So what we would provide with our technology is that the customer, uh, which is a marketeer, that he can choose the channel he would like to address and then make a target uh, a target marketing campaign for this specific audience because a telegram user might be different than a viber user yeah, yeah. and even more different an sms user you cannot just make one campaign for all yeah. uh, and this is where we are strong so we have the view completely from the marketeer point of view and the technology is just an enabler you know it should not be in the middle it's just enabling what uh, what your scope is. Mm -hmm. I see. 
Andre, what about you? A lot of challenges, a lot of demands, a lot of uh, regulations. How, how you are ready for this? Don't tell me about regulations. I can't yeah, tell bet, the regulated bet, country. Bet, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, I think the general direction we are all moving in is the bigger and bigger degree of, like, you know, uh, M many different communication channels will have to combine themselves in one and the same system. It's not just about messaging, you're right to say, but voice calls as well, emails. So, and the people that are using these platforms, our customers, need to have a wide variety of choices you know, to reach, to better target their campaigns, to better target their customer audience, you know, using different, different kinds of messaging, messaging applications. I'm actually the one spoiling the Darius picture with my 11 messengers. So I'm the one making it very hard to, you know, segment the customer audience, you know, people like me. You never know how exactly to reach a particular person. Yeah, but anyway, so that just means that, yeah, more convergence needs to be out there in the, in the communication platform and basically equip the system users with as many options as possible. It's just about that. Okay. Same as it sounds. Okay. So uh, let me ask you something, and I think that this is going to be the tricky question of the of the panel today. Um, messaging is going really very fast now. Okay. It's the early years. We have a lot of time in front of us in order to make preparations, and I'm absolutely sure that uh, the whole market share is going to be rearranged soon because of a new player or some more players that are gonna change and they're gonna put some effort. But there is a, a, a medium that uh, uh, already gained uh, 400 million uh, people, the 300 million people within one year and called Telegram. And Telegram announced that it's given the ability to send messages and chatbots and communication and P2A, whatever, for free, forever. Okay. So, what do you think? Uh, Andrea, I'm going to start with you. What do you think that we have to deal with? How, how, how we have to deal with this? Because I suppose that a marketeer having the ability to send free messages is going to be very happy. So, well, to be, to be honest, I don't believe in completely free things. There is always someone who has to pay for it. Yeah, and normally, it's the end user. We used yeah. to say that when the product is free, that when the service is free, the product is you. You know that, okay? <laughs> Well, somebody has to pay for it anyway. If it's not the owner of the Telegram, yes, anyway. So people will find a way. So I don't know. Honestly, I don't, I don't believe that like, uh, there will be nothing and Telegram will be completely free for businesses, for brands, as well as for regular users. Oh, well, well, I know that the owner of Telegram is, a, is an interesting guy who is ahead of the, like many of other people in the telecom industry in terms of his views. And he's like, you know, the ideas that he has in his mind. So we might expect some surprises from a guy like him. But I don't believe in things that will disrupt the entire industry. Yeah, honestly, I don't think anything of that is going to happen. Okay. Are you going to integrate Telegram in your platform? Could be. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, okay. What about these, the, these, these things are just one last thing. These are thing for regulators is just to prohibit Telegram once again, as they did in Russia last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, Telegram is a Russian thing, and you make the thing difficult in messaging the Russian people. Yeah. I think. But we love you anyway. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Etienne, hello. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Telegram is knocking your door. Yeah, I mean, welcome. As, as Andre is saying, like so there is nothing really for free. I mean, if they want, if a brand needs to uh, to publish a chatbot, he still have to build a chatbot. So he still have to uh, to engage costs to build it, to create a user flow, to create a significant experience. So, so there is nothing for free uh, at the end of the day, and uh, we'll have to see how Telegram is uh, is evolving their their businesses, but. Um, uh, for the moment, uh, we're not going to change our strategy because uh, they have announced it. We'll have to see how it's evolving. Um, and after, you know, it's also a question of uh, 
uh, in which markets they are. I mean, there are 400 million users, right? Uh, in which countries? We don't have the same countries, so it's not not totally, you know, the same logic uh, for us uh, compared to uh, to other channels. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about the mobile ecosystem forum? Well, as a trade associations, we welcome competition. Let's see what, what happens. Um, That's the best thing to do. News. However, also as a trade association, we remind the industry of some of the bad things that have happened in the past. And one of them has been spam. So the industry, and we've seen it in WeChat as well when it first opened, uh, it actually allowed a lot of messages which were unrequested and debts really burned a bit the platform itself. Um, so there's nothing wrong with business messaging when it's, you know, inspected, wanted, and even value added. But what happens when people approach your platforms and use it for things that are not compliant with GDPR, et cetera? And even worse, what if it happens start to be attacked in terms of fraud and others? So there are two sides of, of math. One looks at the interest of the customers and customers, and by doing that, the long-term uh, health of the industry as a whole. So I would uh, love to, to expect the Telegram will also invest in something that will avoid all of the bad things that are currently associated with a free-for-all. Um, the, the paid per message uh, has really created an industry that has probably been more efficient than others. Um, and one of the things that I just mentioned now, email was a great platform free-for-all, but stress it was on the walls um, we, when we do some calculation right now, <clears throat> there are 1.6 billion actual users, people that read emails, messages from businesses. Um, and that's, that's 1.6 billion users of emails on a monthly basis. A lot of people, young people are not bothering with email. They're reading it once a year or once a, once a quarter. So that's what happens with a fantastic platform. If an old person like me would expect to read every single day. And then it's absolutely shocked to see the surveys and see people don't want to read emails every now because it's full of stuff they don't want it. So let's be careful in turning SMS or other OTT platforms into the, the next email as well. I see. I see. However, spamming with OTT is really difficult. With SMS, you can do it just like this. But spamming with Viber, I mean, not anymore. Or with WhatsApp or I don't know. You know, and the OTTs are really very good in this, I think. Fabrizio, what about Telegram? Let's have this, this little talk. What is your opinion? Well, uh, I'm a big fan. <laughs> you know, <laughs> surprising. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I really love it. They are disruptive. They are fast. Yeah. Applause, really. I'm, uh, I'm a big fan. And I don't fear um what these guys are doing and by the way i find it extremely refreshing that they operate for free mm -hmm. you know because like we all in this audience we expect that wi-fi is for free here right yeah. you know so whenever you come okay i want to have wi-fi yeah, yeah. for free so yeah. why i don't have uh, access to information for free mm -hmm. and um, but i agree with all the panelists that nothing is for free so somehow they must do yeah. some money but i think in a in a, in a messaging platform where you have hundreds of millions of users, there are also millions of ways how you earn money. It's not only selling data, but maybe introduce a payment system yeah, or, yeah. Uh, or, or whatever, you know? So um, I think that Telegram will play a big role in the marketing because the ability to send rich content, you know, and very cheap to the audience um, is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And the money I save, you know, for maybe paying the SMS or, or, uh, or TV campaign, I can invest, uh, you know, to promote, uh, to come to the own brand Telegram bot. You know, but it does not mean only Telegram. And there will be many bots. And uh, the, the question about the spamming, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, at the end, I make it a title for a hashtag, for a bot, where I have to register to it. So that's what I really like on these messaging platforms. Mm -hmm. 
they, you guys have control of the opt-in because uh, you, I, me as a user, I have to give the opt-in, but if I don't want, I give the opt-out, yeah, exactly. controlled by the platform. Something which is, which is not happening with SMS. With SMS, you sell the numbers and yeah. then you spam again from, yeah, uh, from, from, from the beginning. So, um, and at the end, if a message is for free and I'm as a brand, I push too much, I lose my audience. I don't think that uh, Viber lost uh, his uh, audience because uh, customers of uh, Viber uh, were pushing too much, but the brand, they got a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. But the same thing happens if I send too many emails. Uh, the yeah, same yeah, thing exactly. happens if I send too many SMS. Exactly. So at the end, again, um, uh, serve what your audience wants uh, to hear. So yeah, uh, you asked me what I think about Telegram. I love it. Okay. So, uh, guys, the, the point is that I put the telegram into the conversation. It's because I wanted to, to, to indicate that the messaging, enterprise messaging industry, it's very liquid and it goes very fast because marketing is fast. And, you know, uh, we all have to be prepared for this. So, in order to make the long story short and to close the, the conversation, uh, talking about the, this liquid market, Etienne, what do you think that uh, we have uh, to do in order to, to welcome the industry messaging in a better environment? Um, as Viber, as Telcos, as whatever, you know what I mean? I mean... What is your advice in order to, to make it? I, I, I would say like uh, something interesting that Fabrizio was saying, I mean... The show, like when we started business messaging at, at Viber, uh, part of the team at Viber was, uh, was afraid that uh, it would hurt our audience. It was the first time we were entering businesses into the communications. And it's true, like we, we, we didn't see a, a, a neg negative impact. And uh, if the users didn't want to receive the message, you can opt out and, and move on. And uh, brands that are sending too much message, they are creating their bad, re bad reputation for themselves. And, 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 and on our, in parallel of this, of this work, we also improved our uh, spam detections, et cetera, to, uh, to avoid uh, hurting our, our user base. Um, for brands, uh, an advice uh, uh, we, we, we want to give is like, what, do, what, what kind of experience they want to have in messaging app? Uh, what kind of uh, experience they want to bring to the users? Uh, how they want to interact with them? And they have to adapt their format, their, format uh, their tone of voice, the way they want to communicate and adapt it to each channel for Viber, for WhatsApp, uh, maybe for tomorrow for TikTok, which, who is also uh, booming uh, very fast. And uh, part, part of the response is on the site and, and, and to make sure they are, they are using the right tools uh, with the right... Uh, um, responsibility. With the right objective and the right restrictions uh, when they are communicating to the, to the users, because at the end of the day, uh, users want to get more information from the users, from, from the brands, uh, but in a better way, uh, in, in a faster way. Okay, Dario? Uh, very difficult to, 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 to say a few words, but I'll, um, there's one thing that I've learned recently, and I think I'll go with that. And what we do published a report on the P2A uh, survey. So looking at how uh, customers responded to that. And for me, it was interesting. 55% of people are ready to engage in an automated conversation with uh, something in the, in the back. And another 45% they said, no, not really. Um, I don't trust it all. I'll wait for it, et cetera, et cetera. Now ask the same question in different forms and say, uh, here are the use cases that you could, you could do. Now, 83% um, said, I'll, I'll have one of those. Uh, a booking an appointment, 33% said, I would love to book an appointment via message chat. I love that. And, and we see that a, a lot. So 17%, it's a third of people reacted. We need to be careful. Fabrizio was mentioning it before, but I think Andrea as well, is we're not selling to customers and the end customers and their brands, uh, just the technology, explaining in different ways and explain the value to them. And voila, you have a much better sales. We have been 
uh, talking to each other about P2A, but people don't know what P2A is. People don't like chatbots, actually. The word chatbots we, te we tested, actually people think it's, it's a robot and they don't like talking to robots. But do you say, this is how you do certain things? And they say, oh, and fast and so easy, they love it. Uh, so my, my main suggestion to everybody, enterprise and us, the suppliers and uh, the rest, let's talk about the end value. It's actually a much more compelling story than the great technology that we're developing right now. I see. Fabrizio? Well, I can uh, just uh, repeat what uh, Dario said um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to show the possibility, you know, to explain, but not on the technology level, but what is the value. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. To bring examples. And this uh, is what is missing, really. Yeah, because just, uh, you know, just giving you an iPhone and then uh, find out yeah. uh, what you can do with it, uh, it's uh, much more difficult than if somebody will explain to you what you can do with it. So I think um, our mission is really to, uh, to explain business cases, it's not uh, coming with the complicated buzzwords where sometimes not even I understand what the people are talking about from all this abbreviation, it sounds like an illness and not like, <laughs> uh, like, uh, like a business abbreviation. And, um, but I would, what I would really like to uh, tell you here also in this audience is that we have a bright future. We are just in the beginning of something extremely big, mm -hmm. actually huge, not only big. And, and promising. And it just started, you know, yeah. so nobody yeah. is late. Take your time. Yeah. Um, I really agree with you, you know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, good. Andre, what about you? What well, is your advice to brands? What is your advice to the market about this revolution of, of enterprise messaging? My advice is actually very, sim very simple. We all serve the needs of the end customers, each in a different capacity. All, all of us, I mean, all of us players in the telecom industry. So probably the best thing we can do is to continue talking to each other, exchanging our experience, exchanging our knowledge, exchanging our points of view on the market trends, etc., educating our customer, explaining things to them. And that will basically help us kill two birds with one shot. First, going where the market is going, not missing a trend, not missing a new thing that needs to be paid attention to. And at the same time, creating market trends sometimes when we can, because we are all influencers and we can influence the way things are developing. So to me, the communication is the primary factor for success of the communication of the industry, just yeah. like any, anything else. Yeah, I, I agree. I really agree. So just because we're 50 minutes already, have you got any questions from the audience uh, digitally, digitally, digitally or physically? Uh, audience, uh, live audience is right this time. So no, you just want to have questions. OK, a question here. No, it was pretty clear, I suppose, everything. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So, um, I would like to thank you all for, for being here uh, in Zoom or in, in the room. I would like to thank Fabrizio for his marvelous collaboration. Etienne from Viber, give my love to Constantacci, Mrs. Constantacci, and to Noah, okay? And uh, to Dario, Mobile Ecosystem Forum. To Andre, and thank you very much for your marvelous presentation and your sponsorship. And I'm going to close by disrupting a bit. And I will tell you that A2P is going to be the king for this decade. Don't worry, everything is going to be fine. Uh, according to Nick Lane and Mobile Square. Uh, P2A is going to be WhatsApp, and WhatsApp is willing to be the queen besides the king, because this is how it works. OK? But be aware, because Signal, you know, Signal, Signal Messenger, mm -hmm. it's getting really, really big. Yeah. And it's coming from behind without a notice. So our environment is really very liquid, but it's also very fascinating. Thank you very much for being here. It was a pleasure to talk with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So dear all, we are at the end of our last panel session for today. I want to thank Andreas, first of all, for moderating, our panelists for sharing the valuable knowledge, and our audience for both in this room and online for tuning in and listening. And that's it for today, and I'll see you in our panels tomorrow and on Wednesday. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, guys. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody.